So, hi everyone, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I'll try to be not too much of a barrier between uh, you and the social event later on. Um, so, I'm Guillaume Aimon. Uh, on IRC, I'm Guy Gemont. I didn't write it, but yeah, like the prefix of my email. I work for Igalia, uh, your uh, friendly open source consultancy. Uh, and I'm going to talk about um, an ongoing experiment, uh, or ongoing experiments that I'm, that I'm um, doing, playing with uh, Cairo and OpenGL or OpenGLES on the intersection of both, and uh, that's experiments that were mostly uh, sponsorized by uh, Samsung Research America, so thanks to them. Um, so let's uh, present uh, the various technologies uh, that are used, that have been used, that will be used. Um, so, uh, so I'm interested in uh, Cairo GLES and GStreamer. So what is Cairo? Cairo is a library to do 2D graphics, uh, basically as if you had a pen and you could draw on the, sc on the screen, uh, but programmatically. And then you can even like paint and do fancy things and compose your shapes together. Uh, Cairo GLES is, um, is a project to uh, add support uh, to do all this uh, all these graphic work in the GPU. So it's done either in OpenGL or in OpenGLES. Uh, it's got backends for yeah, OpenGL and OpenGLES v2 and now OpenGLES v3, I think, as well. Uh, it can also play nicely with EGL and GLX, and I think with WGL as well, though I don't use that much personally. Um, so, and the problem, uh, yeah, to give more, more context, the holy grail of a good integration, uh, which I have not uh, uh, met yet, uh, is to to be able to uh, to have your whole pipeline where you have a nice hardware decoder and you make it decode into your GPU memory and then you do whatever transformations in the GPU and display it and don't have your CPU uh, interfering with that. Uh, so the big problematic there is to share video buffers uh, between uh, various GStreamer elements which might be in different processes. Um, so before that, to pass uh, GPU, uh, to pass video buffers, video frames that are inside OpenGL textures or things like that, you had to. When I say before, I meant GStreamer 010. Um, so you had to add your specific caps and then subclass GST buffer or do uh, and do like various. Uh, ugly things that weren't always too flexible. But luckily, no, we can be happy. Uh, we're starting to have, I, th I believe that uh, Sebastian must, ha must have talked about it uh, earlier in this afternoon. I couldn't ha attend his talk, unfortunately. Um, so we have uh, the GST memory structure, uh, which allows you to handle memory that is not in the not necessarily CPU memory, and it has a nice abstraction. So, so we can uh, get from that more ease of programmatic, programmatic ease of programmation, uh, which means more, uh, in, in the end, more flexibility. Um, we also have a way to share uh, context information between elements, uh, especially in our case, the uh, typically the OpenGL context, that can be also information about a rendering thread, or uh, things like that, that uh, various elements uh, might need to, to know and to be synchronized uh, on so that 
they all use the same. And there's also the uh, uh, texture upload meta, uh, which is, uh, if I'm not wrong, a nice way to specify uh, how like a given uh, buffer can be uploaded to uh, to where you want it to be. So um, there are various projects that uh, start to implement that uh, pretty well, or that are at least experimenting, <coughs> and that's what I was trying to to do as well. So there's uh, EGA, GLES sync and the library that, that was created uh, with that libgst EGL, uh, GL image thing from GST plugins, GL uh, does interesting things as well. So that's all, all the context that exists. So we have Cairo, Cairo that can play with OpenGL and be more efficient. We have uh, no, a good way to play with uh, buffers that are in GPU memory in GStreamer, <coughs> and, and my current problem is how to integrate all these bits together. Um, at first, you can imagine that there are various uh, possibilities. So, like as a kind of reference, uh, sometimes play with uh, the idea of just having uh, using a good old XV image sync and and the GST video overlay. From that. Uh, I get an X drawable, so that's already a method that would only work on X window. Uh, I get an X drawable, uh, and then I can use a Cairo uh, X lib surface that and link it to that drawable, and then from that I could imagine like co copying with Cairo that surface into a GL surface, and then integrate that with a Cairo GL interface of my application. <coughs> uh, that's a possibility. Uh, I've actually tried it, it works. Uh, it's probably not the most efficient way of doing. Uh, then um, you could also use either EGL GLES sync or GL image sync and uh, take the buffer, uh, the, take the GL or GLES texture that it creates where it like these elements will nicely put your video frames into a texture that exists in your OpenGL or OpenGLES world. So we could take that texture and on, on wrap a K row GL surface around that. Or we can uh, try to make our own sync, which has the advantage of following a lot of. Uh, random experimentation without uh, breaking other people's code. Um, so that's um, the first uh, attempt that, that I'm currently doing, what, what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to make a nice integration uh, with my like own sync. Um, and it's starting to work. Um, I have, I'll sh show some results later on, maybe even a, a quick demo. Um, so I created a GST allocator on a GST memory subclasses. So I have my own memory, which, uh, which uh, wraps, which is, so, which is a way for me to handle my GL textures and link them to a Cairo GL surface. And the yeah the allocator is uh, the object that creates the GST memory elements on that um, that other elements upstream. So know how to create these memories. Uh, so the advantage of that for now, as it is implemented, is that um, uh, an upstream element, say a decoder could uh, use that allocator provided by my Cairo sync and start uh, and, uh, using that GST memory. He would uh, call its map method to start having a buffer that he can handle even in CPU space. Decode, decode the video there and then call unmap when it's ready to upload to the GPU. 
so that the the upload to the GPU would happen as would start happening as soon as it's theoretically possible to to uh, happen. Um, in the future, uh, I'll talk about that later. Uh, we can do even better things uh, by using GST allocator on GST memory. Um, so the thing currently can work with both OpenGL and OpenGLES, uh, like both backends of Cairo GLES. And uh, I've worked with uh, both GLX and EGL. Uh, it's able to use pixel buffer objects, uh, but not with a perfect uh, efficiency. I'll talk about that later. So pixel buffer objects, in a nutshell, they're um, a nice OpenGL thing. Uh, we are doing things that allows you to uh, upload uh, your video frame or any image to the GPU in an asynchronous ma manner and in a way that's done with direct memory access so that uh, the CPU doesn't have to be involved. So the upload is, is done uh, while leaving your CPU free for other tasks. So I've created a very, uh, <coughs> well actually I didn't, I actually created a very simplistic Benchmark, I modified it a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can. Try to suggest something like that. Woohoo. So, what's happening here? Uh, yeah, sorry, it only runs for a little bit of time. So, the, the top frame is. Uh, uh, so, yeah, basically, my sync gets uh, video frames. Um, and then display the same frame in various, uh, like it's copied in various KRO GLES surfaces. And so I've tried to uh, have the same test running uh, using uh, either with pixel buffer objects or not pixel buffer objects and as a kind of old reference. I also implemented, we implemented the same um, the same kind of silly benchmark with a XV, Im XV image sync and then doing the copying into Cairo GL surface. So the, in all the demos, the Cairo codes of doing the animations is, is the same. The only difference is the way we get, uh, we get to push the images in the first uh, Cairo GL surface, either getting it into a Cairo XLib surface in the case of XV image sync, and then copying to that, or, or just getting it directly because we use our, our own uh, GST memory. Um, the nice result uh, is that pixel buffer objects, uh, so yeah, to explain, it's re really a bit small. So on the left in blue, uh, that's with a synchronous upload. In the middle, uh, in a kind of pinkish purple, uh, it's using pixel buffer objects. And on the right is the result with XV image thing. And so uh, and the higher the better because the numbers are frames per second. Uh, so how many frames per second you can, uh, how many frames you can push per second uh, when you do things as fast as you can, not caring about, uh, about your refresh rate or anything. So that's like a hundred. That's about sixty. Um, and so the reason why, let me find. Uh, I'm lost in all my windows. The reason why uh, pixel buffer objects don't work that well. Actually, they used to work better. Uh, uh, but before we made a change, um, it's a problem of uh, whether you're optimizing for your desktop GPUs where pixel buffer objects will be a nice thing, or with a, for a mobile GPU. Um, I, well, I have a slide about that later, so I'll, I'll explain that issue 
better on later. So stay tuned for the explanation of the underperformance of pixel buffer objects in KROSync. Um, oh, that's the side already. So yeah, various difficulties I've encountered uh, developing KROSync. So I'm going to talk about the last one first, uh, the problem of what you need to do for desktops and what you need to do for mobiles. Um, on, on mobile GPUs, um, doing in KRO terms, it would be a KRO acquire device. So like taking the KRO device so that you can do operations on it. Uh, in uh, say open uh, in EGL uh, parlance, it would be EGL uh, make current, so like making the OpenGL contexts that you want to use current to your, your thread. So in a way you could speak of like GPU context switch or something like that. I guess. No, that might not be a good analogy, but we, we often speak between ourselves of like a context switch, but that has nothing to do with a CPU context switch. You're just acquiring the OpenGL context for your thread. And so that, that operation almost cost nothing on my Intel GPU, uh, but on some, on a lot of mobile devices, it would cost like maybe five milliseconds or something terrible. So you want to avoid these things, minimize uh, these calls. So by minimizing these calls for Cairo, for Cairo Sync, uh, these are the side effect that, that render pixel buffer objects uh, use this because uh, the ideal case of pixel buffer object is you start uploading your buffer as soon as you can once your uh, decoder has or your element upstream has your frame ready to be sent to the, to the GPU. And with pixel buffer objects, so you start that as soon as you want, the upload happens, then you want to display it, it's already uploaded, perfect. Um, so we win a lot of time. The program is that means that to trigger the upload, you need to get the context. So call a make current and then release the context. And then you we need to get that context again when you want to display the video. And that is very costly uh, on on various mobile GPUs. So in that case, you want to upload and display in the same in the same batch. Uh, so that's what Kerosene currently does, uh, and since it uploads and displays at the same time, the <coughs> pixel buffer objects don't help at all. Um, the annoying thing, because I always have to complain, uh, Kero GLES uh, can be compiled with either OpenGL or OpenGLS v2, so if I want to test my code with both, I always have to recompile the whole world. Uh, Driver bugs and regressions uh, are always a pleasure when you play with uh, OpenGL things. Uh, in particular, one that comes to mind uh, on my machine, OpenGL, uh, not OpenGL ES, but OpenGL uh, could be used with EGL in the past. And since my last distro upgrade, I got drivers that are broken for that case, so I can only use EGL with OpenGL ES. And with OpenGL, I have to use GLX. So, yeah, and that's like funny things that make me wonder, did I introduce a bug in my code? And then you, after some, after an afternoon of testing, you realize, ah, damn it, it's the driver that has a regression. Um, also, KRO is an RGB thing. Uh, Videos tend to be not RGB, but uh, YUV or similar color spaces. Uh, so that's a problem I haven't solved yet. Um, uh, but uh, ideally, you, you, I mean, the way I solve it currently is just to use uh, video convert to the, to the conversion for me. But that's not the most efficient way to do. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. EGL make current, uh, forcing me to make pixel buffer objects not efficient. Uh, 
Yeah, you have also bandwidth differences between uh, desktop and mobile GPUs. Mobile GPUs generally have a rather narrow bandwidth, so you can't uh, <coughs> upload as much as you want at the same time, uh, not as much as on desktop. Uh, even though I haven't run too much into that specific problem uh, so far in my experiments. Uh, so what do I want to do in the future of K-Rosync to make it uh, better and nicer and uh, advance my experiments uh, and uh, get, get a nice integration? Uh, I want what I call more flexibility on the code path. Uh, that's mainly around that issue of uh, either going asynchronously on uploading uh, with pixel buffer objects or something like that as soon as you can, or in minimizing um, the calls to make current. So uh, right now the code, the code path is hard coded to just uh, optimize in minimizing the calls to make current. Uh, but ideally you should be able to f uh, choose between the two options depending on what GPU or what driver you have and what is most efficient. Um, and uh, the other issue is that uh, using my own uh, GST uh, memory and GST allocator, I cannot really interact with other elements in an efficient way. So that prevents in particular from reaching the holy grail of zero copy from uh, hardware decoding to displaying. Um, so f for that I should use the same GST memory format than what upstream is likely to be wanting to use. So uh, two good ways to achieve that uh, could be to uh, make a lib uh, backend for libgstgl. Uh, Technically, that means uh, subclassing uh, GST GL window. Um, and so that uh, we would use uh, the same uh, memory elements as the rest of, uh, of, of uh, GST plugins GL, uh, which I guess is where things are heading overall. Uh, Hopefully people can confirm that to me and come talk to me. Uh, I try to find the uh, GST plugins GL people. I want to talk to you. Yeah, that, that's what I've heard in the talk area. Um, and so uh, another uh, solution could be to just uh, make a rather simple element that just wraps a GL image sync, gets, gets the texture that it uploads on put it in a wrap a Cairo surface around that. Uh, even though I foresee that it would have a bit less flexibility, but it can be a nice experiment at least to do. So I think I'm gonna try both. I've already uh, started uh, experimenting a bit with uh, libgst GL. Um, and uh, as for where are my experiments, so far, they're on uh, private repositories. Uh, it's pending some uh, legal checks uh, that are outside of my control. Uh, hopefully, uh, it should be released before the end of the year, I guess. But I, I, I can't make any hard promise here because uh, that's not under my personal control. Um, and that's about it for uh, my... Uh, Various rumblings on playing with KRO and GStreamer. Any questions? Um, not yes. really a question, but a couple of, of comments. Mm -hmm. um, one, that the reason you're seeing 60 frames per second for an XV image sync is probably because by default, default things like Intel XV ports sync to feed blank, so you will get to 60 and you won't get any faster. Yeah, that, that's what I was uh, thinking, though. Uh, Maybe I didn't choose the, the right uh, resolution. I don't remember what resolution I was using. But if I, exper uh, I, I checked quickly, I, I had a dot actually just before the presentation. I checked quickly uh, 
using a slightly bigger resolution, and I was uh, just raising the re resolution a bit. I was below 60 frames per second. So uh, I, I think that maybe there's that limitation too, but it's still about uh, accurate. Yeah, maybe even though on some experiments it was going a bit above 60, so I don't know. So uh, yeah, I'll just uh, summary for for the uh, for the video recording of the nice comments from Jan. Um, so the first one was uh, that in my experiments, the limit at around 60 frames per second in the XV image sync could be linked uh, to uh, to a synchronization to the refresh rate of the screen because most screens, mine including. Uh, has a refresh rate have a refresh rate of about uh, 60 hertz. Um, even though, as I said, if I if I if I raise a bit the uh, just a bit the resolution, I quickly get under 60 frames per second. So I think that result is still uh, about accurate. And the other comment was about uh, experimentations that were done uh, in 2009 to include. Uh, K row a bit everywhere in GStreamer on add YUV support in K row on Pixman. I, I've had a look at that, uh, played a little bit with it, uh, but it was not, I, I didn't really continue that effort and went kind of my own separate way uh, because my main goal. Uh, is not to be able to um, modify the videos with k uh, along the pipeline, but it's mostly just to display the video nicely in a k GL environment. So that's the, the big difference with uh, that effort that was done previously. Any other question? Can any yeah. plans to add that, like uh, modifying uh, the video inside the pipeline? Uh, any plans to uh, modify the video in the pipeline with Cairo? Uh, I don't have that kind of plan right now. If people want to join uh, efforts with me and maybe trying to think of how to do that, that could be an idea. Even though um, I don't know how easy it would be to uh, get, say, YOV support for Cairo being upstreamed. Or is that something that's a non goal for Cairo, maybe? Um, and so, if we want to make the transformations and have to do everything in RGB, it might not be uh, optimal. So, I don't know, that's yeah, I, a complicated problem, but that, 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 that could be something in the future that yeah, could be nice for video editing in particular, I guess. Any other questions? Well, as the image suggests, you can always uh, ask me more questions at the social event later on. Thank you very much. <laughs>